Man, Helldivers has been getting around, hasn't it? Lord knows I'm not complaining. Spreading democracy has never been this fun. You gotta defend humanity from these horrible alien threats, no matter the cost. But you know, as much fun as it is, they weren't here first. And pretty much everyone has realized this, because for once there's no one using an exclusive to say my console is best, and instead everyone's been asking for Xbox players to get in on the fun. Because my fellow Xbox 360 owners know what it's like to plummet out of orbit from a pod into a horde of aliens trying to kill you. When all you got is your weapon, your instincts, and maybe if you're lucky, your squad mates. Before we had galactically manifested democracy, we had the brave men and women of the ODSTs, dropping into the fiercest of fights that no one else could, getting the job done no matter the odds. Eventually this became playing second fiddle to a whole bunch of the world's most destructive children, which you better believe gave them some pretty bruised egos, but I get ahead of myself. Allow me to tell you the history of the ODSTs, the bravest soldiers humanity has to offer that they didn't steal from an orphanage to make. And on the subject of ODSTs, there's gotta be some pretty good signs behind them, right? I mean, come on now, they fall out of orbit onto their target. If someone didn't know exactly what they were doing when they designed that, all you'd get is a pancake trooper. Someone intelligent had to figure out how to design that process to make it's safe, and if you too would like to be someone intelligent, you can do no better than Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is where you go to learn math, data analysis, programming, and more with thousands upon thousands of interactive lessons. It's got problem-solving skills baked into its lessons, so you aren't just mindlessly repeating information onto a test like the world's most bored parrot. With fun lessons you can do whenever you want, it's perfect for whatever your life situation is like. Be you busy 15 hours of the day or have all the time in the world, Brilliant can help you learn what you want when you want it. You ever sit there through a course in school and could not focus? no matter how hard you tried? I have. Hell, I've been on the other end of that, trying to teach kids who couldn't want to be there any less. I promise you it's just as awkward for the teacher as it is for you when they call on you and you can't provide an answer to save your life. But Brilliant is fun, engaging, and actually interesting. That just doesn't happen. A neat first course to try for you could be programming with Python. I was never much for coding, but I know people who are, and they've done quite well from it. And regardless, coding is one of those skills you can do quite a bit with. Can't hurt to learn. And to make sure you have some more incentive to learn? Savings. Using my link in the description and pinned comment, you can not only get a 30-day free trial, but 20% off your annual plan. That's http colon slash slash brilliant.org slash pancreas no work for a 30-day free trial and 20% off the annual plan. Knowledge is something that can't be priced, and you can get it here at a discount. So try Brilliant today and start learning now. Now then, let's jump feet first into hell. The ODSTs in Halo, which for the uninitiated stands for Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, have their origins well before the actual ODSTs were formed. In the year 2129, the whole concept of them was created. Paratroopers on Earth had proven effective before, since dropping a whole bunch of people out of the sky on top of their objective can be a handy trick to pull off. So some absolute paragons of brilliance thought, what if that, but from space? And in 2163, they were officially formed, just in time for a whole load of war to break out. Around this time in Halo lore, humanity had been expanding across the solar system, and rather unfortunately, some blasts from the past came back for round two. Communist and fascist factions gained power and went to war with the UNSC, and the ODSTs were faced with humanity's greatest challenge yet. And they performed quite admirably, largely being deployed on Marge against the neo-communist forces and helping deal with the interplanetary wars on that front. Immediately after this, though, Halo pulls a bit of a 40k time skip here. Because for about 300 odd years, the ODSTs didn't really do anything and sort of languished as a fighting force. Humanity was both in its golden age and facing numerous existential problems that weren't the kind of ones you could deal with by having a big army. On the one hand, the slipspace drive being created meant that the whole damn galaxy was now ripe for colonization. On the other hand, Earth was heavily overpopulated, famine was a massive problem, and given that the interplanetary wars were over, the UNSC now had a massive military with not a lot to throw it at. Priorities were switched up, money thrown elsewhere, and the ODSTs were left by the wayside. Not done away with, and they were still almost certainly better equipped and trained than the average soldier by virtue of them being a special forces organization, but plain and simple, the UNSC just didn't really have anything for them to do. Until jump cut the year 2490. The United Earth government was now facing its new crisis, the insurrection. Turns out when you're 800 light years away from Earth, you might not be super keen on paying Earth taxes or following Earth laws and rules. Earth, meanwhile, was quite keen on getting those outer colony taxes. This led to civil unrest, which over the years turned into an unofficial civil war between the UEG and the rebelling colonists, given the catch-all term of the insurrection despite not all of these groups being affiliated with each other. A quick detour here, but the Orion Project had been one of the many things the UNSC and ONI came up with to deal with this problem. The whole idea was to create the best soldier possible that could take on insurrectionists before they could truly flourish, while also being slightly more subtle than just nuking the entire planet. In case you think I'm exaggerating that one to keep the 40k audience listening, no. 
I am not. They did that at least once. Shout out to Far Isle for being humanity's first exterminatist planet. Ultimately, the Orion Project was a failure, only creating slightly better soldiers instead of gods of war. But the lessons learned did lead to the ODSTs being brought into the limelight once more. Their training and equipment was revamped and brought up to modern standards, and they were deployed against the insurrectionist forces on missions where the standard marine just wouldn't cut it. The Orion Project also had the other small side effect of leading to several dozen kidnapped children down the line, but that's neither here nor there. The ODSTs, as always, performed admirably against the Innies, but unfortunately for the UNSC, they just weren't enough, which is also unfortunately going to be kind of a running theme with the ODSTs. That was the entire goal of the Spartan program, in fact, to create super soldiers that could quell the insurrection before it threatened to send humanity back to the Dark Ages in a no-holds-barred civil war. Whether or not that was something that would have actually happened is up for debate, but important people were afraid it might, and the ODSTs weren't giving them what they wanted in preventing it. The UNSC and Oni wanted a super soldier that could eat bullets and take out an insurrectionist cell before anyone on the outside knew it existed. A soldier whose standard operating procedure is to come screaming out of orbit directly on top of your house is not that. They'd kill the insurrectionist, of that there is no doubt. They'd also leave a trail of rather bitter colonists in their wake, ready to start shit once the troops left. Of course, you probably know what comes next. Your destruction is the will of the gods, we will cleanse you all in holy flame, debt to the heretics who solely the holy grounds we so rightfully deserve. The Covenant have shown up and are ready to make their existence humanity's problem. Very quickly did the priorities of the ODSTs and the UNSC as a whole switch focus, going from handling insurrectionist threats to being deployed against the Covenant wherever they showed up. And while I feel I'm going to keep repeating this, make no mistake, the ODSTs served with distinction during the conflict. Early on in the war, for example, was the Battle of Hot Yai. The Covenant had done their usual thing of slaughtering most of the civilian population and later established a base on the planet, presumably to hunt for foreign or artifacts, but who knows, maybe it was going to be a grunt zoo or something. In response, a hundred ODSTs were dropped nearby to deal with them. Despite a dozen ODSTs being either shot down or killed in landing accidents, the base was taken with zero casualties. Just to emphasize how insane this is, during the actual combat, not a single ODST was lost to the Covenant forces. They rolled up, dragged their balls across Covey chins, and took the base. Of course, if you're familiar with how the Human Covenant War went, you can probably guess what this ultimately amounted to. Somewhere between fuck and all. In space, Covenant reinforcements arrived, and the UNSC ships in orbit went from barely hanging on to Jesus Christ we need to get the hell out of here now. No matter how good a soldier or pilot you are, you can't really outfight a glassing beam. Nevertheless, Unicy forces were able to evacuate the ODSTs, dropping a nuke on the remaining Covenant for good measure. Of course, Hot Yai was still glass, but hey, the ODSTs look good. What's a planet compared to a propaganda piece? This sort of trend continued on throughout the war. At the Battle of New Jerusalem, a UNSC force was nearly completely annihilated by the Covenant, but the ODST Carlo Hoya managed to rescue several high-ranking officers in spite of being captured himself. We'll briefly come back to him later on. On Arcadia, ODST forces were keen, allowing much of the civilian populace to be evacuated, although you were probably too busy swearing at Red Team to shoot down just a single Banshee to notice that happening. And my fellow Halo Legends fans will know that ODSTs were crucial in assassinating a minor prophet, as one of them was the soldier that ultimately took the killing shot after the accompanying Spartan was mortally wounded by a brute chieftain. Relatedly, Cal141, my beloved. Thank you, the babysitter, for re writing my brain chemistry. Speaking of, however, the ODSTs had a rather tense relationship with the Spartans. It started when the Master Chief killed four of them in a training ring after they tried to shove him around, not realizing that Spartans are to ODSTs what ODSTs are to toddlers. Whereas the average soldier generally looked at the Spartans with awe, reverence, and dread, the ODSTs were much more competitive. There was a bitterness against the Spartans from the ODSTs that came about from equal parts jealousy over their reputation and a plain old competitive spirit. After all, you've got have at least a little bit of a hot streak to willingly drop from orbit into a firefight. The ODST Edward Buck once called them glory-hungry bullet catchers, and overall the ODSTs felt rather inferior regarding the Spartans. That's also an ironic statement given what happens to Buck, but again, we'll get to that. Regardless, the ODSTs were still sent on extremely important missions, even if the Spartans were given the worst of them all in spite of the ODSTs' bruised egos. For a general rule of thumb, here's who was sent on what missions. ODSTs were given the brutalist missions and normal person could feasibly carry out. Spartan 2s were sent on missions that required something no mortal could hope to achieve. And the poor Spartan 3s were sent on missions that the ODSTs couldn't complete and the Spartan 2s couldn't complete without dying. 
still, it wasn't all one-sided rivalries. ODSTs working alongside Spartans frequently came to respect their skill in battle. Hard not to after seeing one of them flip a warthog over and then punch a wraith to death. While it wasn't a universal thing by any means, ODSTs who fight alongside their super soldier comrades often came to, if nothing else, appreciate that they were on the same side against an alien alliance that wanted their complete destruction. Once again, Cal 141, my beloved. You cannot understand how badly I want to be this ODST. And of course, the ODSTs were present for the final major battles of the war. On Reach, they were just about everywhere as could be expected. Deployed as always to missions that normal troops just couldn't quite swing. Chiefly among them being noble teams returned to sword base, because Oni decided they needed a noble team and Oni gets what Oni wants. Aside from that, pick a battle during the fall of Reach, you could probably find a couple of ODSTs kicking around there somewhere. And we can't forget about their actions on Earth. I would certainly hope you don't forget about them, because they have a whole goddamn game. Edward Buck and his squad, which I am led to believe is called Alpha 9, was originally part of a task force of ODSTs to board the Prophet of Regret's ship via their drop pods. Instead, however, Veronica Dare, who is an Oni agent, takes command of their squad to break into the artificial intelligence that was part of the city's infrastructure. It had critical data, and Oni wanted it. Naturally, Dare did not actually tell Buck or anyone else what they were doing there, or what they were there for, but what can you expect from Oni? At least an inquisitive or we usually tell you why they aren't telling you something. But despite the squad being separated due to the profit of regret tearing a slipspace portal directly in the city, they were able to reunite and capture the engineer that had absorbed New Mombasa's AI. And I really feel like the rookie's missions show you just what ODSTs are capable of, even if you know the ultimate reason he kicks so much ass is because he's an FPS protagonist. ODSTs aren't jumping onto Covenant artillery with energy shields and billions of dollars worth of equipment and augmentations. They're special forces operatives. They create through the shadows, have the best training, and know what they need to do to get a given job done. As much as they can go in screaming on top of the enemy's head, they can also be a surgical tool to get the job done. That's the lesson of Halo 3 ODST. That and to make sure you fall for a woman with balls. They're tough and strong, but they're tactically brilliant from the extensive training they go through. Almost makes you understand why a lot of them dislike Spartans. They wanted missions nearly as dangerous and still got them done, but Halsey's test tube babies got the propaganda all to themselves. And we will stop talking about the Rookie and everyone except for Buck in this video because their story ends here. The Rookie is not killed in a book, Mickey is not a traitorous weasel who sold his squad out, the story ends there, and that's that. ODSTs also served alongside the human forces sent to the Ark and the Human Covenant War and prevent truth from activating the rings, as well as the Flood from eating the galaxy for a second time. And as always, yeah, they did good. Fought the Covenant good, had to stand next to Master Chief so the eyes weren't on them, but by that point they were fighting the Covenant and zombies on a solar system-sized construct outside the Milky Way. I can't imagine many of them were feeling bitter about being shown up by the Chief given the circumstances. Now post-war is where things get rather interesting, not because there was any particular change in their doctrine, they remained the ODSTs they had been, but instead the ODSTs have yet another competitor to their rank the Spartan Fours. But the Fours are unlike the previous generations of Spartans, or rather they were more like the original generation of Spartans. Rather than Oni either practicing eugenics or scooping up random orphans from the streets and turning them into gods, these Spartans are volunteer forces from either accomplished veterans or younger candidates who show promise. Edward Buck and Carlo Hoya, themselves both exemplary ODSTs, now serve the UNSC as Spartan Fours. The Spartan Fours are now direct competitors of the ODSTs, both being volunteer special forces branches composed of already existing soldiers. So now the ODSTs are in danger of being shown up by Spartans who are themselves soldiers who could have become an ODST instead. Halo unfortunately hasn't really expanded on this very much in favor of trying to pretend Halo 5 never existed and also trying to pretend the Endless are interesting, but going forward in the universe I imagine two things will come of it. One is that the rivalry between the groups will continue in either a more or less heated manner. Could become less extreme because Spartan 4s are now super soldiers rather than super kidnap victims or super orphans of war and would probably know how to interact with the ODSTs. Plenty of them were ODSTs before becoming Spartans, so that might ease tensions a bit. But it could become worse, because now the Spartan program is actively poaching potential and existing ODSTs. And two is that eventually, ODSTs might be phased out. As dismissive as you might think it is, Spartans are just better than them. As the Spartan program becomes more widespread and it becomes much easier to produce and maintain them, ODSTs might fall to the wayside, in much the way modern militaries generally don't perform cavalry charges anymore. 
That's not necessarily a guarantee. ODSTs could always exist as a place for soldiers with the dedication, but not the ability to become a Spartan. Or becoming an ODST in Halo's future could be a stepping stone to becoming a Spartan. But I don't think it's much of a stretch to imagine that as Spartans become more and more widespread, ODSTs will be phased out. Or that won't happen, because at the rate Halo is going, Halo 7 is never going to happen, and Halo devs have confirmed they've axed countless Halo games, some of which were based around ODSTs. Remember in the 2000s when every single new FPS to come out was called the Halo Killer and then forgotten in months? Damn shame the actual Halo Killer turned out to be Halo. Now before we wrap up, let's take a look at what makes an ODST an ODST. As I said before, it's an all-volunteer program. Which makes sense, because forcing someone with either claustrophobia or a fear of heights into a small metal coffin that falls from orbit is a great way to get yourself a soldier who dies of a heart attack. The initial training only lasts three weeks, since everyone in it already went through basic. And while it does help the soldiers get fitter, it mostly just exists to see if they're tough enough to go on ODST grade missions. It does have exercises involving the potential ODSTs falling from great heights to prepare themselves for an orbit drop, though that may just be an excuse for drill instructors to push cadets off a cliff. After this, the training becomes focused on preparing the ODSTs for squad-based deployments. There aren't any lone wolves in the orbital drop shock troopers. You're part of a squad and you damn well better act like it. The training they go through is of course just as tough as the physical training from before, but now you have to get used to working with the bastards you've been forced together with. Tactical training rounds are commonly used, which for those not aware are rounds that not only act as an anesthetic, but also harden the clothing you wear on impact. It's done to simulate actually getting shot, forcing you to limp on a leg hit by a TTR as if you've actually been shot by a live round. That is assuming you don't just pass out, the anesthetic's not exactly a low-grade thing and it is being fired at you from a gun. After this comes the final stretch of training, tactical training. You've proven your body can handle the ringer the UNSC is going to put it through, you've proven you can work with a team without ripping someone's throat out, now it's time to actually learn how to fight a war like an ODST. There's even a unit of ODST whose main purpose is just this, the 340th ODST Combat Training Unit. Their whole deal is setting up training exercises for other UNSC Special Forces to go through, as well as teaching others about Covenant combat tactics. You can safely assume two things. These guys are going to put you through hell, and they presumably get their asses kicked a whole lot whenever someone remembers Spartans are Spec Ops units that can do with a refresher or something like that. The ODSTs are then, as before, given tactical training that makes what the rest of the UNSC forces go through look like a joke, and by the time it's finished, you have the best soldier a normal person could possibly hope to be. At any time, but especially during the first three weeks of physical training, an ODST could be RTU'd, return to unit. It's exactly what you think it is. The soldiers will drop out of ODST training and return to whatever position they had before. There's no penalties for this, it's not like they discharged the soldier because they failed special forces school, but it is generally seen as pretty humiliating. There's also the ODST special purpose forces, given additional training in specific areas. The best example of this is from Halo Reach. When you're flying around on your jump pack in New Alexandria, those ODSTs flying next to you are air assault units or bullfrogs, soldiers with extra training specifically for that kind of scenario. There's plenty of other areas they can be trained in as well, from explosives to sniping. Their armor is, as always with ODSTs, the best of the best, short of being Mjolnir armor. It's tougher than standard marine armor, being composed of titanium to keep them alive that much longer. The helmet, aside from being the single coolest design in all of science fiction, also has a heads-up display, motion trackers, and the visor system. It allows the ODST to receive navigational data, store any data they receive on a mission, and even the ability to access certain systems in a given area. If an ODST happens to be operating in, let's say, an abandoned city that's under attack by the Covenant, they can access cameras, basic security systems, and whatnot to make their lives that much easier. The armor has heating and cooling systems built in as well, to prevent the soldier from either freezing to death or boiling alive in their armor. It's also vacuum sealed and can be used in outer space. 15 minute time limit mind, but that's 15 minutes longer than any of us can survive in outer space, so I'm not going to begrudge them for it. As for their general behavior, ODSTs are an odd bunch. For one, around themselves they're a whole bunch of clowns. Laughing, joking, smacking each other in the face with rifle butts to wake each other up from a nap. Thank you for that, Romeo. You single-handedly ensured there can be no zero damage ODST run. Not that I'm insane enough to try it. When normal soldiers come round, though, they usually clam up quick. They become silent, barely talking to the soldiers in question, and are frequently outright hostile towards them. They go through hell and know that normal marines either couldn't or wouldn't complete the same thing, so they're certainly an arrogant bunch. Goes a long way towards explaining why they're so bitter towards the Spartans, seeing them, as Buck mentioned, as a bunch of glory-stealing bullet eaters. To be entirely fair, it's not like Oni Amber alerting random children off the street was common knowledge. I imagine they'd be at least a little bit more sympathetic towards the Spartans if they knew that fun little nugget of information. They're also not the 
fondest of authority. They're not going to be insubordinate to a higher officer, but you know, maybe in the heat of battle an ODST's radio gets jammed or broken and he can't follow the commands the guy in charge has given him. Accidents happen after all, nothing you can do about it. They do respect the leaders of their squad though, given that they know the guy went through the same training they did. Plus, they believe that officers should lead by example from the front, to the point that it's standard operating procedure for the drop pod of the ODST in charge to hit the ground first. And for non-ODST officers that particularly impress a group of them, they might just give the guy a kanji tattoo. Far from saying something like peace or love or whatever crap you can find tattooed on some college idiot, the kanji here means either bastard or badass. They don't have two different kanji depending on who they're tattooing, the meaning entirely depends on which ODST you ask. If the receiving officer happens to show that tattoo to an ODST, it basically signals to the soldier that this dude knows their stuff and you can accept they're in charge for a reason. That little nugget of information comes from the Cole Protocol book, though you might have forgotten about it in favor of remembering Grey Team dropping a star on an alien colony. One of those was a cool world-building moment, the other is a war crime that gets a pass from being a war crime only because the war had already ended. The Arbiter did forgive them, though, probably because he knows you shouldn't throw stones from a glass house. They're, as you can probably guess, incredibly proud of what they do. The training they go through is no joke, and they know damn well they're going on the toughest missions around. And as much as their cocky, dismissive attitude towards normal soldiers and the jealousy of the Spartans might rub you the wrong way, I'd say they've earned it. The casualty rates for ODSTs is something closer to the Imperial Guard, so if nothing else, if it bothers you that much, they're probably not going to be around long enough to annoy you for very long. And that's the lore of the Helljumpers. Sure, they aren't as good as the Spartans Halo loves to show around, but you can be damn sure they'll get the job they're sent on done no matter the odds. As always, thank you to my wonderful channel members. You are the orbital insertion pod to my ODST, letting me drop into whatever setting I'm talking about to make it immediately a worse place to be in. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. All units.